This planter box is a self-watering style container, similar to an earth box. Self-watering style containers are my favorite type of container to grow my vegetables in. But unfortunately, they're kind of on the expensive side. I think this box cost around $30, and I've got four of them because I had found a deal on Amazon um, a while back, but even still, they weren't very cheap. So there's no way I could afford to grow all of my vegetables in these boxes. Well, over the years, I've seen various videos online about how to make your own self-watering container. And I came across one I really liked on a channel called Gardening with Leon. His way of making a self-watering container uses empty soda cans or plastic drink bottles and a five gallon bucket. To me, this seems like the cheapest and simplest way to do it. So I started using his method with water bottles and it's worked great. I've been growing in these homemade self-watering buckets for several years and I've been really pleased with the results. So today I'm gonna to show you how I make a self-watering container with a five gallon bucket. I'm also going to put a link in the description to the original Gardening with Leon video, so you can watch that too. I plant my containers a little different than he does, but I'm mostly following his method. So even though these planters are called self-watering containers, they don't literally water themselves, but you don't have to water as often, and the plants get a steadier, more regular supply of water. This is especially helpful for growing cucumbers and sweet peppers, because they can get bitter if they don't get enough water. And they're also susceptible to blossom and rot if they get watered inconsistently. The first thing I'm gonna do is drill a couple of drain holes about four and a half inches up from the bottom of a five gallon bucket. One drain hole is probably enough, but I usually put three drain holes just in case one or two of them get clogged. Also, it isn't really critical how high up you put the drain holes, as long as it's somewhere between four to five inches. Next, I'm gonna drill holes in the top and bottom of these empty water bottles. The reason you do this is so that the water can get through the bottles and so they don't try to float in the water. So here's my hole at the top and my hole at the bottom. When you set it next to the hole in the bucket, you can see that the bottle comes up a few inches higher than the hole in the bucket, and that's what's going to give you an air space by holding the soil up above the water. You need enough bottles to almost fill the bottom of the bucket, but you leave a few small spaces between the bottles to let just a little potting mix come down into the water so it can wick the water up. I usually use either 10 or 11 of the small water bottles or if I have a gallon size jug, then I'll use one gallon jug along with four or five of the smaller bottles. And I just make sure to leave a little space between the bottles so some of the potting mix reaches the bottom. When I use the one gallon jugs, I drill holes in the top and the bottom just like I do with the smaller bottles. Most self-watering containers have a piece of pipe that goes down to the reservoir so you can put your hose in the top of the pipe and fill the reservoir with water. I don't usually have extra pipe laying around, so a lot of my buckets don't have the watering pipes, and they still work fine. You just have to water a little more slowly and carefully when watering from the top without a pipe. But thankfully, I did happen to find a piece of pipe laying around, so I can demonstrate this. But it's only a three-quarter inch pipe, and ideally you would want a one-inch pipe but this size will still work and it will be a lot easier than watering without a pipe. So when I am using a pipe, my next step would be to cut sections of the pipe that will be long enough to reach the bottom of the buckets. For a five gallon bucket, I cut approximately 17 inch sections. When I cut the pipe pieces, I try to do it at a slight angle so that it doesn't sit completely flat in the bucket and the water can flow out the bottom into the bucket easier. Once I have the buckets ready, I fill them with potting mix. Self-watering containers probably won't work as well with just any soil or compost. You need potting mix, which is usually going to have peat moss in it, and the peat is what mainly gives the potting media a good wicking action. Most regular potting soil or garden soil is likely to be too heavy and compacted and may not wick the water up properly. 
I usually make my own potting mix and it works great for this, but I have also used store-bought potting mixes and they work good too. I'll put a link in the description to a video that I made that shows how I make my potting mix just in case you're wondering what I do. I plant my wicking containers similar to how you would plant in a grow box, but I use smaller quantities of the amendments since my five gallon buckets are smaller than patio grow boxes. The instructions that came with my patio grow box say to use dolomite lime. So after filling the pots with potting mix, I add approximately a half cup of dolomite lime and mix it into the top few inches of potting mix. Dolomite lime may also be called dolomitic limestone or a similar sounding word, but it's not the same thing as hydrated lime. You should not use hydrated lime for this. Dolomitic lime contains calcium and magnesium, and it helps prevent blossom end rot in fruiting plants like tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that lime is alkalizing to the soil, and you wouldn't want to use it for plants that like acidic soil, like berries. I don't use lime for my strawberries, and I also don't use it for my leafy greens like lettuce or Swiss chard. After I mix in my half cup of dolomite lime, I'm going to dig a fairly deep hole in the middle of the bucket and plant my pepper seedling. As I push the soil back over the plant to fill in the hole, I'm sweeping the soil away from the outer edges and making a bit of a trench around the outer rim of the pot. Next, I'm going to add two cups of a granular 444 organic fertilizer into the trench I made. If I was using a synthetic fertilizer, like a granular 101010, then I would only use half as much. So if I was using a granular 101010 synthetic fertilizer, I would only use one cup. After adding the fertilizer, I'll cover the fertilizer and the trench with soil. Once everything is covered, I'm going to water it in good and fill the reservoir with water until I can see water running out of the holes in the side of the bucket. Now if I'm direct seeding something into the container, then I prepare the pot the same way as I just did by adding dolomite and making a trench with fertilizer around the outside edge, and then after I smooth the soil over the top, I plant my seeds in the middle and water them in. I usually start cucumber seeds by sowing them directly into the pot, but I usually plant seedlings for peppers. It just depends what type of plant I'm planting because some things do better when they're seeded directly in their pot and other things do better when they're transplanted. If you've seen my video about growing tomatoes in fabric grow pots, then you may be wondering if I've switched to growing tomatoes in five gallon buckets, and the answer is no. I used to plant tomatoes in five gallon buckets and it worked well until we had a tropical storm come through one year and it rained for like two days straight. Some of the tomatoes drowned and wilted from too much water. So for tomatoes, I only use grow bags in trays now. The grow bags also function like a self-watering container because the tray holds the extra water and acts as the reservoir and the water is easily wicked up by the fabric pot but if there's a situation where we're getting too much continuous rain, I can take the grow bags out of the trays and they can dry out quicker. I haven't had problems with any of my other plants wilting in the five gallon buckets. In a side-by-side -side comparison, I think my cucumbers and peppers grow a little better in the buckets, so I primarily use the buckets for them. I've been growing in these five gallon buckets for three or four years now, and I've been really happy with them but I'm really trying to reduce my use of plastics. So lately I've been experimenting with using sticks and Spanish moss to hold the potting mix above the water instead of the plastic bottles. I try to find sticks that are long enough to go above the holes in the buckets by several inches when they're leaning diagonally and crisscrossed in the bucket. I put enough sticks in the bottom to hold the moss out of the water except I leave one small area for the potting mix to reach the water so that it can wick the water up to the rest of the pot. 
I haven't done any very scientific experiments with this yet, but so far I haven't noticed any major difference with using bottles versus sticks, so I think it's working out well. I plan to continue doing more experiments. I would also like to find a different type of container than a plastic bucket, but as of now I can't think of anything that's as cheap and effective for this purpose, so for now I'm continuing to use the buckets. But if anyone has any ideas of an inexpensive and similar functioning container that I could use instead of plastic, then I would welcome your suggestions. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.